Hello and welcome to the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs War Room Update. We're talking today about a special issue that is happening in the Palestinian world. Just a few days ago, a new Palestinian Prime Minister was appointed. The previous Prime Minister, Mahmoud Ashtaya, was deposed by Mahmoud Abbas, the PA chairman, and a new Prime Minister was installed in his place. There were no elections. There haven't been elections in the Palestinian Authority for some 20 years almost. But the new Prime Minister, Mohammed Mustafa, is taking his position as the Prime Minister and is about to appoint his new cabinet and to swear in the new government. Democracy in the Palestinian Authority is a dirty word. It doesn't really exist. There haven't been any signs of democracy there for many, many years. The last time democracy was tried in the Palestinian Authority was in 2006 and resulted in the rise of Hamas. Palestinian Authority Chairman also then, Mahmoud Abbas, now in his 20th year of his first four-year term, tried to stack the cards in favor of his Fatah party. He enlarged the parliament. He enrolled the American administration to put out millions of dollars to support him. But nonetheless, he lost. Hamas won the elections. 74 of the 132 seats of the Palestinian parliament went to the genocidal terrorist organization. We're joined today with our resident expert, Yoni Ben Menachem, an Arab affairs uh, uh, expert and an expert on the Palestinian Authority. And we're going to discuss to, with him a little about who is this new prime minister? What is he symbolized? To what ability is he really able to revitalize the Palestinian Authority? As we've seen recently, Palestinian uh, uh, the Authority has been losing favor in the eyes of the Palestinian people. A recent poll published showed that 80% of the people want Mahmoud Abbas to leave. They don't support the, 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 the continued control of Fatah. Most of them would like to see a joint government that involves Fatah on the one hand, but also the genocidal terrorists from Hamas on the other. To what extent, Yoni, is the new prime minister capable of really pouring some content into the vision of U.S. President Biden when he said that only a revitalized Palestinian Authority would be able to play a part in the reconstruction of Gaza and in the future state building. Can, can Prime Minister Mustafa revitalize the Palestinian Authority? Uh, since I spoke to a senior member of Fatah uh, uh, movement just uh, an hour ago before uh, this broadcast, uh, and I'll give you the bottom line and then we'll go into the details. But what he told me, he said from Muhammad to Muhammad, nothing is going to change. We, are, uh, we got rid of Muhammad Ishtaya and we got Muhammad Mustafa and nothing will happen. Everything will st st stay the same. The corruption, uh, everything will stay the same. This is the bottom line. But uh, let's talk about uh, Muhammad uh, Mustafa. Muhammad uh, Mustafa, who, who is he? Well, he was born in Tulkarem and uh, he's a, a member of the executive committee of uh, the PLO. Uh, he had the uh, uh, economic uh, division of uh, the PLO and uh, he was also the head of the uh, Palestinian uh, Investment Fund. He's very uh, close associate of uh, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, the chairman of the PA. Um, uh, in the last decade, he was also a deputy prime minister, minister of uh, national economy, and uh, he has a lot of experience uh, in economy and uh, finance. Uh, this is a, an important, uh, 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 an important significance because uh, we're talking about, uh, according to the American perception and the Palestinian perception, that this uh, new government that will be a technocrat government will handle the uh, rehabilitation of Gaza Strip. And we are talking uh, about a lot of money that is supposed to go into Gaza uh, to uh, uh, rehabilitate uh, the damages of the war. Uh, so somebody has to take care of these uh, funds. Uh, so um, this is one of the reasons that uh, Mahmoud Abbas appointed his close uh, associate. We'll uh, get into the other consideration was he was also appointed. 
anyway, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, objection uh, in the, among the Palestinian factions to his uh, appointment because he was supposed to um, uh, involve the other Palestinian factions in this new uh, technocrat uh, government. This was supposed to be uh, some sort of a, a unity government, a, techno a technocrat government, uh, a government of experts, but still with uh, some uh, political affiliation to the other factions so that they can support this new uh, government. Uh, and this government uh, is uh, uh, supposed to bring uh, reforms and they change the political system and, na and national unity uh, to the Palestinians, but apparently it's not uh, going uh, to happen. Uh, actually, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, the head of the PA, he was forced by the Biden administration to fire uh, uh, the previous government headed by Mohammed Shtaya because of the big criticism on this government, the, the Palestinian street, both in Gaza and in the in Judea and Samaria, uh, most of the people, most of the Palestinians uh, thought that the uh, uh, Muhammad Ishtaya government was corrupt. Uh, uh, there were a lot of stories about embezzlement uh, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, nepotism uh, in, the, in that government, and uh, nobody uh, liked them in uh, the Palestinian uh, arena, so the Americans uh, said to uh, Mahmoud Abbas, we have, you have to get rid of this government and appoint a new government. Another reason for the American pressure uh, on Mahmoud Abbas to uh, switch the government uh, was because of the Israeli objections. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu uh, objects, still objects the, uh, that this government, any Palestinian government of the Palestinian Authority will rule a Gaza Strip uh, in the day after the war. And why? Because uh, Israel says that the, the Palestinian Authority supports terrorism, uh, encourages terrorism, and uh, uh, is not fighting against uh, terror, and also allows incitement uh, against Israel in the uh, uh, education system, in the, in the uh, official media of the PA. So, uh, uh, President Biden told Netanyahu that uh, don't worry, we will have a revitalized uh, PA. We will have a revitalized PA. This will be a completely different uh, government uh, that will uh, not be corrupt, uh, that will fight uh, terrorism, that will stop uh, the uh, play, uh, pay and slave system, uh, paying uh, uh, terrorist uh, 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 money, salaries salaries every month, uh, we will stop that, we will stop, we will make sure that this government will stop the incitement, will change the uh, uh, education system, and uh, will stop the incitement on the media. A lot of promises uh, were given by the American Biden administration to Israel, but still Israel refuses because, and I think this is a justified position of the Israeli government, they know that nothing will be changed. And why nothing will be changed? Because as long as the head of the PA, Mahmoud Abbas, still heads the PA, the one that is still to this very day uh, refuses to uh, condemn the, the massacre of Hamas in, uh, on the 7th of October, and the one that uh, does not uh, issue uh, any orders to the uh, uh, Palestinian security forces to fight against terrorism, uh, nothing has changed. As long as he's in power and he's in charge on Muhammad Mustafa, uh, nothing will happen. So Israel is very pessimistic about what is going to happen. So I watched a, an interview with uh, um, the new prime minister in Davos. Um, and, and there really he presented sort of an idea of what he's talking about. He presented a, 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 an idea that would really require, as you said before, we need, they need an economist, they need someone who's good with money, because I think the Palestinian Authority are already seeing dollar signs in their eyes. Prime Minister Mustafa is already talking about a reconstruction package that would cost over $15 billion. He's uh, um, buying into that same idea of Palestinian relativism with the truth. For example, when he said that 
There are over 350,000 houses, housing units that have been destroyed in Gaza, when really the UN, even the UN, only says that we're talking about 88,000. Um, they're, they're looking at the numbers, they're looking at how much this can possibly bring in. To what extent, Yoni, is, is the fact that Mustafa is a money mine. He's looking to really ensure that as much money, I would say, I would argue, is going to be siphoned off from this entire fund for the benefit of uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas. I saw reference to the fact that both Mahmoud Abbas and his children, who have managed to build multi-million dollar industries in Palestine, in the Palestinian Authority, are all happy about his, uh, his appointment. It, it, was that a guiding factor to what extent that money can be siphoned off? We have to be very careful for uh, concerning this issue uh, because we don't want to be uh, have a, a libel uh, uh, suit against us, right? But without I, question, I can, yeah, I can I can quote, and I can only quote uh, accusations that I hear in the top of Fatah's movement, and of course uh, the. Uh, uh, those who are close to Muhammad Mustafa, they deny it completely. We have to say that in advance. They deny these allegations. They deny but, the allegations also amounted in the Panama documents? <laughs> they deny everything. They say that this is uh, uh, just a result of a, a rivalry in the top of Fatah uh, in the succession battle. Who will be the successor of Mahmoud Abbas? And this is why there is a smear campaign. This is what they say. But what, what, what are we talking about exactly? What, the story is like that. This is what I hear from senior uh, officials in Fatah. They say that uh, uh, Muhammad Mustafa was uh, appointed uh, to this position of the new prime minister thanks to the involvement of one of the sons of Mahmoud Abbas, who is a businessman, a very uh, uh, known uh, businessman. And this has a connection uh, to the funds that the PA is supposed to get from the donors, from the donor countries to uh, 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 the reconstruction of Gaza Strip. This is the uh, accusation. And senior officials in Fatah uh, say that they try to prevent the appointment of uh, Muhammad Mustafa to this position. They talked to uh, Mahmoud Abbas. They said, look, this is going to, going to be a boomerang. This is going to, uh, again, create a lot of problems for the PA. We will not be able to regain the trust uh, with the Palestinian street. We will we not be uh, reliable again? Like the same thing, the same scenario that was with uh, uh, Muhammad uh, Ishtaya. Muhammad he was also an economist. And there were a lot of allegations similar to those now that are directed towards Muhammad Mustafa. So, but uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, he refused. He denied all the, the pressures from uh, Fatah uh, not to appoint Muhammad Mustafa, and he actually uh, forced him on a Fatah movement. And I think it's not the end of the story yet, because uh, there are going to be some scandals uh, very soon, from what I hear. There are going to be leaks uh, concerning uh, certain activities of Muhammad uh, Mustafa. But uh, it's important uh, to say that. But anyway, I have to also bring the, the comments of, uh, of uh, the people who are close to Muhammad Mustafa that are saying it's all lies and it's not true and he's very uh, loyal to the Palestinian cause and he's only coming to help uh, uh, the people of Gaza. This is what they say. To what extent, Yoni, I, I, really looking back on his discussion at, at Davos, um, uh, he, he, he talked a lot about the, the, about the Palestinian situation. It seems to me that his approach is very much the same old, same old. Um, he was talking in the same language of when asked about whether Hamas has a future part in the Palestinian leadership, he equivocally or, 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 or was, was incapable of saying that Hamas had no part. Rather, he equivocally did state that Hamas is part of the Palestinian people, and the Palestinian leadership should be made up of all of the Palestinian people. Is Mohammed Mustafa capable of fighting terror, one of these basic things, which means fighting Hamas, fighting Palestinian Islamic Jihad, fighting even within the Fatah party, the Al-Aqsa Martyr Brigades, all of these organizations that took part in the October 7 massacre. Is he capable of delivering on that front? 
on one of the very, very basic and elementary requirements from Israel and, and I would assume also from the Americans? Well, first of all, right after the announcement of his appointment to be uh, the new prime minister, uh, all the Palestinian factions headed by Hamas, they issued uh, uh, an official statement uh, uh, saying that they are not going to cooperate with him and uh, with uh, Mahmoud Abbas and uh, blaming uh, uh, Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas for uh, uh, taking uh, an independent uh, decision and leaving them out of the picture. Uh, this was uh, a big thing uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago when he was appointed. So there's a lot of anger among Hamas and the other factions for this uh, appointment. As for your, uh, 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 your uh, asked questions about fighting terrorism and the fighting incitement and so on, um, it is only uh, enough to look at the vision uh, of the uh, new prime minister, Mohammed Mustafa. He published his vision in an article uh, in a Palestinian uh, newspaper. There is nothing mentioned there about peace with Israel, living in coexistence with Israel, fighting terrorism, stopping incitements, all the uh, promises of the Biden administration to Prime Minister Netanyahu, there's not even one promise mentioned in this uh, vision. So he can completely, completely ignore in this uh, article that he published the, the, the idea of peace, coexistence, and, and fighting terrorism. And as for your questions, will he fight terrorism? This is not his decision. Uh, you know, this thing is only in the hands of uh, the, the head of the PA, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, uh, the one that, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, uh, Abu Dawood, uh, the one who planned the, the massacres of the Israeli athletes in Munich, he wrote in his book that Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, is the one who financed this terror attack. Uh, so uh, fighting terrorism, uh, and giving instruction to the Palestinians uh, security forces is in the hands of Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas, not in the hands of Mohammed Mustafa, even though officially he is in charge of the uh, of the security forces of the Palestinian Authority. So I don't I don't uh, expect anything. And you know, if we look at what is happening on the ground, uh, what uh, was with uh, Mohammed Shtaya a government, you know, the Palestinian Authority lost control, security control, to the uh, armed terrorist group supported by Iran. And to this very day, to this very day, they did not regain control in that area. The, the IDF is the one who is fighting in uh, Jenin, Nablus, Tulkarim, in these areas against, against the terror groups. And the Palestinian Authority is not doing anything. So, how can we expect uh, the new uh, government uh, to, uh, to act against terrorism? First, they have to regain control over the north of the, of, uh, of, uh, the West Bank of Judea and Samaria. They cannot do that. They don't want to do that. And uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, doesn't want to do that. What's yes, incredible, Yoni, is that, is that, 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 that they seem to be presenting this idea of revitalizing the PA Look here, there's a new person who's more acceptable, who doesn't really appear to be more acceptable. And even within his own conversation, specifically addressing that idea of, of the terrorism, uh, of the loss of uh, a governance in the northern areas of, of, of Samaria, um, um, Mustafa's opinion, in, as he said in Davos, was very, very clear. The problem is that Israel is arresting the terrorists. The PA does nothing to arrest the terrorists, and he complains that Israel's arresting the terrorists. So who, in his opinion, does he think is going to be able to take control of those northern areas? Why does he think that the PA will suddenly be able to walk in if Israel stops arresting terrorists? Israel actually did, for a, a, not a short amount of time, stopped going into the town of Jenin, stopped going in over, over, over almost two years ago stop going into arrest terrorists and all it did was generate a massive spike in terrorism the pa didn't fill that vacuum it didn't step in and take uh, uh, the terrorists off the street and arrest them it was actually the pa mechanisms that were leading that terrorism together with the, the iranian backed forces 
You're absolutely right. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, and I recall, after uh, there, w- there was a big military operation of the IDF in the Jenin refugee camps, and then afterwards the PA asked the IDF to withdraw and let them deploy in that area because they want to start fighting terrorism. And on the ground, actually, the IDF uh, withdrew for about a month or two months, and nothing happened. They didn't do anything. So... <laughs> This is all, uh, uh, I call it Palestinian deception. You know, they are just uh, 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 lying all the time to Israel and to the Biden administration. They they put the blame on Israel for the terrorism that is on the ground. Actually, they are not fulfilling uh, their duties. And also, they are violating the Oslo Accords, because according to Oslo Accords, they are the ones who have to to fight the terrorism. This is their responsibility, because... These are areas A. This is the, the, the only responsibility for security and sovereignty, and everything is in their hands, not in the hands of Israel. So they're not doing anything. Now the question that, that, is... That I have to just clarify, Yoni, that they, have sol- they don't have sole jurisdiction in Area A. Israel rema- retained overriding security uh, uh, um, jurisdiction if the PA doesn't function. And Israel only uses that jurisdiction since the PA isn't functioning. That's exactly exactly the problem. And now just imagine, they cannot even control Area A in Judea and Samaria. How will they be able to control Gaza uh, Strip and fight Hamas in Gaza Strip and dismantle uh, the, the military infrastructure of Hamas? Does it sound reasonable to you? No, the answer is no. So I think... Uh, uh, President Biden is delusional. I don't know what he's what he's thinking about. What is he doing? It's very. It's, it's unclear why 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 they would again uh, um, throw in their lot with the, the, this Palestinian Authority that has never really provided the goods. It's never f- actually fought against any type of terrorism. It's taken all of the money that the international community, that international donors have given, has funneled them really for incitement, hatred paying salaries to terrorists. None of this has actually ever worked. The idea of the Oslo Accords creating a Palestinian, a democratic Palestinian society has failed over and over and over again. Appointing a new prime minister, I think this is the fourth prime minister that uh, that Abbas has appointed, um, without a hint of elections. This is not the democratic society or leadership that the US administration should be supporting. This isn't a, an administration that really wants to see the best interests of the Palestinians, and yet they seem to be hell-bent on imposing upon them a, a, a Palestinian authority that is corrupt, that has failed to build any type of system of governance. There are no functioning courts. There are no functioning, uh, uh, um, really, anything whatsoever that would have a semblance of the rule of law. There are tens of thousands of policemen. There are more generals in the Palestinian Authority than there are in the entire American army. Most people don't know that. That, that but that's Mahmoud Abbas's way to to promote and to incentivize terrorism by recruiting ex-terrorists into the uh, um, security forces and then giving them high ranks. Why does anything like this sound like a revitalized Palestinian Authority? Why is there no plan for Mustafa to deal with those endemic problems? You're absolutely right. As I told you just before our broadcast, I spoke to this uh, senior official in the Fatah, and I asked him, is this uh, Mohammed Mustafa is going to fight terrorism in Gaza? Uh, so he, he told me, look, President Biden is not stupid. He knows... He knows that nothing is going to happen, but he needs it for the election campaign uh, in the United States, for the presidential elections, because uh, he has to come with the the idea of the two-state solution. So he wants to show achievements to the uh, to the supporters, uh, to his supporters in the, in the United States that now are criticizing him uh, uh, for his policy. Uh, this is literally I- like giving Akamol to a cancer patient. Yes, so he wants to say, look, I brought a new prime minister, Mohammed Mustafa. Mr. Mustafa is coming with a revitalized uh, a PA to Gaza Strip. He will govern the Gaza Strip 
And by November, by the elections, we will have the uh, two, two state solution getting forward on its track to, uh, uh, to establish an independent Palestinian state. This is the illusion. He knows it's an illusion and it's a lie. But he so wants to convince the voters that this is going to happen. So he's willing to compromise and, and put this uh, puppet uh, 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 government in Gaza. So now we also have to understand that uh, in 2014, uh, Mustafa was also at the time the deputy prime minister. He was in charge of the PA efforts to reconstruct Gaza after the war then. The PA and uh, uh, Hamas were divided then. Um, there really was no no chance of any type of success of the PA being involved in that effort. And already by April 2015, he had resigned, um, again, never taking any responsibility for his failure, but blaming the international community for not providing uh, uh, funding. Why, given his track record, would even President Biden or any of the members of the State Department consider this to be a personality, a figure who can bring about this radical change that's needed in the Palestinian Authority. His track record doesn't show that type of availability. His uh, uh, closeness to Mahmoud Abbas would suggest the opposite. Do you think that, that, that even President Biden is going to manage to, to sell this lame duck to the electorate? He's going, certainly going to try. And uh, look, the Americans are not stupid. This is the last thing you can say about them. Maybe they're naive. But I'm sure that the head of the CIA, Mr. William Burns, he knows exactly what is going on the ground in Gaza, and he knows what is going on the ground in the PA, because a lot of, according to Palestinians, there's a lot of information going directly from Ramallah to the CIA in Langley. Uh, so uh, they know exactly who is this guy, and, and uh, we also have to wait and see the list of the new ministers that we can go check the names and see exactly who is involved in this new government and what is the real purpose of this government. But I think the Americans know the truth, but uh, President Biden is, I think, is desperate uh, to do anything that will uh, help him uh, in the uh, political campaign for the presidency because he is looking at... Uh, uh, his rival, his bitter uh, rival, uh, ex-president Donald Trump, he sees how he's uh, rising in the public opinion polls and he sees the criticism in his own party. Uh, so he's very worried. And this is reflected in his uh, policy also towards Israel, the change in the policy towards Israel. So I don't, I'm very pessimistic because I think that Biden will support this uh, new uh, government. Uh, and will try to put pressure on Israel to allow them to go into Gaza and start working there. And this is the question is, what will the Israeli government do? What will uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, will do? I think that he should, uh, uh, as soon as this uh, uh, government, new government is officially announced, he should tell the American officials uh, uh, very clearly, we are not going to let them in. The IDF is going to stop them in the roadblocks to Gaza, and this uh, uh, government, which is not different from the previous government, is not going to go into Gaza and rule Gaza. Something that that, that, that really does perplex me, uh, Yoni, the, the, this idea of yet another appointment from with, within the PLO ranks. Um, Hamas isn't part of the PLO, it's refused to join the PLO, and, and really there is no, I, 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 would, I would think, Real, no real uh, um, optimistic chance of Hamas joining the PLO. So how is it that Mustafa is able to sell to the audience, really with, with better English even than mine, this idea of there's going to be Palestinian unity, there's going to be a different Palestinian uh, um, society after the war. Is there any signs of that within the either the market research within the understanding of the, of, of the Palestinians with any of your partners uh, um, who, who, you, who you discuss with, do they see this radical change that the war, as in Israel, brought about unity amongst Israel and Israeli society? Is it doing the same thing in Palestinian society? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, even if there will be unity, 
uh, it will be only for a short while because you know uh, uh, if you ask the uh, Fatah, uh, the top of the Fatah, they don't believe a word the uh, Hamas says after the what happened uh, after the coup d'etat that happened uh, in 2007. Uh, when the Hamas uh, military uh, wing uh, threw the supporters of Fatah from the roofs, from the top of the roofs in uh, in uh, in Gaza Strip, and they kicked them out from Gaza. And uh, you have to understand, Fatah and Hamas are like two parallel lines; they can never meet, uh, so there will be no unity. And I have to. I have to comment on that term that you use, Johnny, a coup d'etat. It really is commonplace, and a lot of people use that same uh, uh, this, uh, phrase to, to, to really define Hamas taking control in the Gaza Strip in, in 2007. But really, it's not accurate. They won the elections. They should have been the elected government, both in Gaza no, and no, in no, Judea no. and Samaria. They won the elections for the parliament, for, not for the presidency. Ah, but no one's changing Mahmoud Abbas, but they didn't no, but take they over kicked, Mahmoud Abbas kicked, in Gaza. But they kicked they, Mahmoud Abbas out of Gaza in 2007 when he was still uh, the legal uh, president because the, the elections were for the parliament, not for the presidency. They still And, kick him and out. Mahmoud Abbas deposed the parliament, by, the headed way, by Ismail And by the, the, by the way, the term that I used... Uh, the coup d'etat in English, I translated uh, uh, the exact word in Arabic, inqilab, in Arabic, inqilab. This is the words that Mahmoud Abbas used against Hamas at that time. So I'm only quoting. I, I, I understand that that's the term that, 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 that Mahmoud Abbas uses and Fatah uses to define Hamas um, taking control of the Gaza Strip. But really, I would argue that it's the opposite way around. The person who carried out this coup d'etat, who deposed the elected government, was not was not Hamas in Gaza. It was Mahmoud Abbas who deposed the, the Hamas elected government in Ramallah, which then caused Hamas in the Gaza Strip to seize control. That's something which, it's one of these fundamentals that we have to understand as regards both Palestinian society and their outlook. Was it the chicken or the egg? <laughs> who came first? Who won the elections? Who should have been the government? And who deposed that government? I, I, I think his, history clearly says that Hamas won the elections. Mahmoud Abbas invited Ismail Haniya to form a government. He formed the government. And then after that government wasn't, wasn't suitable for Mahmoud Abbas, he deposed them and replaced them with his own technocrats. Okay, this is another way to look at it. The bottom line is... The bottom line is that there will not, never be unity between Fatah and Hamas, and these are all slogans, and everything will stay what, the same. What, what divide, excuse me interrupting again, what divide, pre, to, tell our audience, what divides these two organizations? Are they ideologically separated by their acceptance of Israel, rejection of Israel, by the use of terror, not use of terror? What are those divides that make them parallel lines that will never meet? In my opinion, of course, um, uh, people who will dispute and not agree with me, in my opinion, there are only minor differences between them. Both of them, PLO and Hamas, they want to destroy Israel. The argument is how to do that. Uh, 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 Mahmoud Abbas is adopting the, uh, the method of Yasser Arafat, the method of the PLO, what we call, let's do it in stages. The first stage is to take over uh, the uh, Palestine to the 67 lines or borders, whatever you call them. This is the first stage. And the, the second stage will to take the rest, the 48 or whatever is called inside the green line. This is the PLO strategy. As for Hamas, they say, no, we're not going to wait. We're not going to do it in stages. We're going to do it now because we have the military force. And the best example is the massacre that we did in uh, the 7th of October. And we want Palestine from the river to the sea. This is the difference between them. That, I mean, that's incredible. The, but, but what you're saying is that it doesn't matter, even given the opportunity that, that Muhammad Mustafa can step in now and revitalize this uh, uh, um, really corrupt and, and, and disastrous Palestinian authority, what we're still going to face is the, the same push to carry on destroying Israel. It doesn't matter whether it's Hamas or, or, or the PLO slash Fatah. Am I understanding correctly? Yes, you're understanding correctly. As I told you, if you look at his vision, 
uh, uh, that was published officially in the Palestinian newspapers. He's, he wrote this article, My Vision of the, uh, of the Palestinian uh, People uh, Future. This is the, the name of the article. Uh, and he, he, we, can, we can go into details if you want, but the, no one word about peace with Israel, no one word about coexistence, nothing. No, no one word about fighting against terrorism, no word about uh, stopping incitement, nothing completely ignoring this issue of coexisting with Israel. So, so how can, I mean, even to just play along with the game for the purposes of, of deluding the, the, the State Department officials, wouldn't you expect them to say something? Or, or, or is the absence of any statement a reflection of what they actually believe? They can't say anything about the, the future state and about relations with Israel because they still don't accept Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. They still aren't capable of saying we are, as they committed ostensibly in the Oslo Accords, leaving the use of terror and violence as a means to achieve their goals. They are incapable of saying, we accept Israel's existence as the nation state of the Jewish people. None of that seems to be part of the equation. None of that idea of stopping the pay for slay uh, uh, um, policy, which really kills the Palestinian Authority three ways. They, they spend hundreds of millions of dollars incentivizing terrorism. Israel deducts the money that they pay, or at least some of the money that they pay to terrorists from the tax income, so they lose a second time. And then America has the Taylor Force Act, which has been uh, um, really conditioning the bulk of US aid to the PA um, on the abolition of the pay for slave policy. And then you have the international community as well, the wider international community that stopped giving money to the PA. Why is that not one of the fundamental requirements of the Biden administration to the PA? Show at least a modicum of good faith announce the entire abolishment of the pay for slay policy. That should be a, a one fundamental of any revitalized Palestinian authority. In my opinion, from what I hear from the Palestinians, they, uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, feels now very powerful. And he's saying to his uh, associates, I don't expect any American pressure on us. Uh, we can uh, go through this new government. Uh, President uh, Biden is very weak uh, in the political arena in the United States. He cannot enforce on us anything. He cannot put conditions uh, to the Palestinians anymore. Uh, if he wants to be re-elected, and he wants to be re-elected, uh, we have a lot, a big lobby uh, in, the, in the United States. The, the young generation supports us because of the war. Uh, in Gaza, and uh, the Americans, they cannot do everything, anything to us. And anyway, he says to his associates, on November, uh, President Biden will go home, and I will stay as the head of the Palestinian Authority. So I only have to gain, <laughs> I only have to gain a few more months uh, and stall, and uh, everything will be fine for us. So it's I don't think he's, he's not worried at all. It's unbelievable. At 89 years old, President uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas still believes that he will outlive President Biden as the leader of the Palestinian Authority. Biden yes. might be up for election for his second term, but President Abbas is only in his first term. He has another 30 years to go at least. And when the people ask him, why don't you retire? You're already 88 or 89. He says the genes in my family are very good, I can live to 100, and I can be, still be the Prime Minister, the, uh, the head of the PA by, by 100. It's amazing that this idea of even a, um, a really basic idea of democracy isn't one of these requirements for the Palestinian Authority. Although, I, as I understand it, one of his uh, uh, talking points, uh, um, new Prime Minister Mustafa did discuss and did mention this idea of having elections. How does he expect to hold elections um, for the Palestinian Authority, given the situation in Gaza, given the situation in Judea and Samaria? Uh, uh, who does he think is going to run? Does he think that he will win an election? Or will Ismail Haniya, Yichya Sinwar, win the next election? There will be no elections. Everybody knows that. But this is... No. Uh, of course not. And this is a slogan that everybody uses, you know, let's go for elections, let's have democracy, let's have human rights. Uh, you know, in his uh, vision that he published, he's talking about human rights. 
not, none of that is going to be implemented on the ground. These are all slogans. They are buying, uh, they are selling uh, uh, drugs, op opium to the to the masses, the Palestinian masses. N nobody believes these things anyway. The Palestinians know exactly who are the rulers, how corrupt they are, and they don't be believe a word. The problem is the the Biden administration. This is the big problem. But so 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 you only, I, I I think the the. The common understanding is that you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. It would seem that that is the approach of the Palestinian Authority, that they believe that really cosmetic changes that can be made to this really, really fundamentally rotten situation will be sufficient in order to pull the eyes over the US administration. Um, to what extent are players like Hadi Amar, um, uh, the, the the consul uh, really uh, consul general in practice of the U.S. administration to the Palestinians. To what extent is is Hadi Amar active and 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 really a part of this process of pulling the wool over the eyes of the administration? They know the truth. I I tell you, they know the truth. I'm sure that the head of the CIA, William Burns, who is very close to. President Biden, I, I, I am sure that he supplies them with uh, all the information and all the truth about uh, this new government. They know the real picture, but there are uh, political uh, issues now uh, involved, and the main task of this administration is to uh, win the elections or be re-elected. So they are willing to sacrifice everything to, to achieve this goal. So there's going to be no pressure uh, on the uh, the Palestinian Authority in that regard, and also Abu Mazen is also uh, sure that the uh, security uh, establishment establishment in Israel uh, does not want the collapse of the PA. So uh, this is why they are going to play along with this new government. This is what he is is, is thinking. Uh, so the big issue, the big I think the big test will be when this uh, new government, after they are sworn in, they will want to go to Gaza and start working in the ministries there uh, that are still held by Hamas, uh, and uh, whether Israel will allow them to go there. Uh, and this is going to be a very interesting uh, experience. We're going to see what's going to be the position of the Israeli government. Having failed now for 30 years to establish any type of real governance. Um, do you see any real option of the Palestinian Authority, headed by Mahmoud Abbas, headed by Mohammed Mustafa, taking control in Gaza and suddenly bringing about this uh, um, flurry of reconstruction of human rights, of the ability to, to take back power from Hamas that it hasn't managed to do for the last 20 years? Where is that idea coming from? This is an illusion. They cannot do it in the West Bank that they control uh, in areas A so far. They, they are losing control, security control. So how can they regain control all over Gaza? This is an illusion. Nobody believes that. This is a, I don't want to say this is a joke because it's a very sad story. So nothing is going to happen on the ground. And the... Uh, uh, nobody can control Gaza at this point. Uh, only the IDF can do that. And uh, also the IDF has the problems because uh, in, it, it needs the reservists in the, of the military in order to control Gaza. This is a very dangerous uh, area full of uh, military infrastructure of Hamas, uh, full of uh, uh, more 20,000 uh, terrorists, armed terrorists of Hamas. The PA cannot deal with such a, a challenge. This is a dream that will never come true. So if I understand your message, just to sum it up, uh, uh, um, as we're in the last, uh, uh, um, really the last uh, uh, part of the program, the, the appointment of Muhammad Mustafa is very much the same of the same. This isn't going to bring about a revitalized Palestinian Authority. That organization is incapable of governing itself in Ramallah and in areas A, and will have zero chance really of taking any type of control in the Gaza Strip, even if the IDF were to really bring them in on a red carpet as they gave um, Gaza to the PA in 2005 on a red carpet. And, and, and so 
what can we see for the for the for the months that are coming up? Is this all just going to be a a, a theatre of the absurd in order to support the the election campaign of, of, of President Biden, or is this going to be any, in your opinion, any real change? that would justify, for example, the international community suddenly coughing up tens of billions of dollars and putting them in the hands of this organization to now bring about the reconstruction of Gaza. I think that uh, uh, President Biden will play with this idea until November, uh, up until after the elections, and then it depends on the result of the elections. But I don't think that the donors will give money to this new Palestinian uh, uh, government because they know the background of uh, Muhammad uh, Mustafa. They know the corrupted system in the, uh, in the uh, Palestinian Authority. They know exactly who is Mahmoud Abbas, who are his two sons. Uh, and they know all these things they know. This is why the Arab countries stopped giving donations to the Palestinian Authority because they are aware uh, that the funds are not getting to what they're supposed to get. So I think that every, everything will be delayed uh, until after the American elections, and then there will be a big crisis, a big chaos in Gaza. And uh, uh, um, is it any different for the Europeans? Whilst, whilst the US uh, um, ostensibly conditioned uh, direct aid to the PA via the, the Taylor Force Act uh, um, and, and, and limited the amount that it could provide to the PA, um, the Europeans have continued on funding the, 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 the Palestinian Authority. Um, the European Union even had a, 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 a four-year-long plan, 2017 to, to 2020, which talked about the non-negotiable, literally, they wrote it themselves, non-negotiable principles of democracy, transparency. Um, is any of that going to happen in the Palestinian Authority? Will the Europeans be able to say, you know what? We've achieved financial transparency. We know where the money is going. No, it's not going to happen. The, the Europeans know that. But apparently they prefer, prefer a corrupted PA over Hamas taking over the West Bank. This is the biggest fear. They say, OK, we don't give money to the PA. They will collapse. And what will you get instead? Will you get Hamas in, uh, in Judea and Samaria? And they don't want that. So they prefer a corrupted PA that will control and rule Area A in the Judea and Samaria. Really quite a bleak situation, I think, for the Palestinians, not from a, an external point of view, but from an internal point of view. The fact that they are uh, uh, seem to be incapable as a society to produce any alternative leadership. I was discussing uh, um, just yesterday with a uh, with a Palestinian that I'm in, I'm in very good contact with, and 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 I asked him, would you be willing to even come on the program and talk? He said the appointment was of of Mustafa. He said to quote is a joke, and the problem is that the Palestinian leadership, this alternative Palestinian leadership, seems to be afraid of stepping up, afraid of standing up and saying, you know what, these people no longer represent me. I want a better, more positive future that isn't the corruption of, of Fatah and the genocidal uh, uh, whims of Hamas. Why is there no alternative leadership? Uh, this is, you know, uh, I think the, the Palestinians are waiting for a chance to uh, uh, get the, push the new generation, the young generation forward. And they cannot do that because the PLO, the PA is still controlled by the old guard, by uh, Mahmoud Abbas and uh, Mahmoud al alul his deputy in Fatah, and they're still uh, those that are the, the elders of the uh, PLO that control the Palestinian society. So once they are gone, of the, once they are going to disappear from the Palestinian arena, arena maybe uh, there is a hope, maybe there's a chance with the new generation. Uh, the, I think that the new generation is the hope of the Palestinians, but as long as uh, Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas, and Mahmoud al alul they control Fatah, I don't think there is any hope for the Palestinians. On that note, Yoni, uh, um, thank you for, for, for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Um, I, I, I really wish that we could talk about something a little bit more positive for the Palestinian future um, rather than a corrupt 
uh, uh, leadership uh, that's full of nepotism uh, um, that really is worrying only about itself, but that seems to be um, the situation on the ground. Um, again, Yoni, thank you for joining thank us. You for and we will be back with you uh, uh, um, with our audience again next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.